condition of that railroad where we're making a cool railroad to stop the you. <laughs> and we do love doing it too. Really glad to have you with us. And uh, today is a very special show. Very special show. I'm, I'm very, it's a, this is a total honor and a privilege for me to be able to bring this to you. Uh, we have <laughs> they're dumping the train. Anyway, yeah, we have one of the world's four most experts that's come to visit today. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, what th this is a total honor and privilege for me. And uh, I'm going to introduce to you here uh, Mr. Gary Wolf. He's the author of several books. He has over 50 years of railroading experience. And uh, he's gone all over the world investigating railroads. I'll tell you more about his book here in just a minute. I uh, do want to say Mr. Wolf and I have become good friends. Uh, he actually watches my videos. Now, how cool is that? <laughs> A world uh, expert watching my videos. That's how we met. But anyway, uh, yeah, Mr. Wolf has volunteered, graciously volunteered his time to come visit and make some videos with us for you guys to learn. And uh, when Mr. Wolf talks, he's like E.F. Hutton. When E.F. Hutton, Hutton talks, people listen. When Gary Wolf talks, people listen. And uh, <laughs> so I hope you enjoy, enjoy today's show. Uh, we're going to get right into it here. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We're really, really fortunate to have Mr. Wolf here. Okay. That's railroad. I'm so looking forward to this. We're going to have a series of videos. I don't know exactly how many we're going to make. They're going to be on truck sets, and uh, he's going to bring. He's going to bring. He's, uh, he's got a wheel gauges with him. We're going to show you how to use the wheel gauges for the wheels on another video too. So we're going to have a couple of. Them. Okay. All right. Oh, I am so excited about this. <laughs> All right. All right, we're here with Mr. Gary Wolf. Well, Mr. Wolf, and it's what a, what an honor and a privilege it is for me to have you here today. And well, thanks for inviting me here to Cold Country Days. Uh, <laughs> I've seen many of your videos, and uh, now I'm here at the place. So uh, we're going to show uh, today. We're going to talk about wheels and how you measure wheels for compliance with both AAR and federal regulations. And then Neat. we're going to look at some various types of freight car trucks and show you the different types of trucks that are used uh, under coal cars, especially, and uh, <laughs> other freight cars. So Sounds what wonderful. Today for. What a blessing to have you. Well, I'm proud uh, to be share here. Your, and I want to say Mr. Wolf is here on his own time. He is not getting paid for this. He's, he's here because... Uh, he loves railroading, and he wants to share his some of his railroad knowledge with us. That's right. And that's just totally awesome. Yep. And I have to say this, Mr. Wolf. Uh, we had dinner with uh, Mr. Wolf yesterday, last night, Jan and I, and, uh, and uh, I found out one thing. We have a world expert here. <laughs> a world expert. And I'll... I'm not being facetious about that. He is. He's going all over the world. And he's telling me all kind of really cool stories about that. But there's one thing I found out about this gentleman right here, and the best adjective to describe him is gracious. <laughs> he is uh, some world pe experts. They're uppity, uppity, uppity. They're better than you. And I cannot say that at all about Mr. Wolf. And that's wonderful. You're a, you're a human being that cares about other people, and uh, there's not a what I want to say, but you know, it just really touched me. I was kind of intimidated what, to begin with, but he made me feel right at home, like I was his friend for years, and just awesome, an awesome gentleman. Well, the thing about it, Dave, what keeps me going at my advanced age is I, I'm still learning. <laughs> and I may learn something here today. I don't know. Well, I'm and still learning it, too. And I can tell people if you quit learning, it's time to give up. So life is about learning and adventure. And 
what keeps me going and motivated is uh, the chance to learn and uh, and also mm -hmm. to illustrate to other people what I've taken many years, 50 some years to learn in this industry because there's yeah. a lot of stuff that's not in the books. You yeah. just have to learn by being out between the gauge and under these cars here. All right, wonderful. Okay. Thank Let's, you again so much. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And we will have several videos. This is not going to be all on one video. So we'll have several of them spread out from what we talk about today. And uh, I'm here. I'm not on company time either. I took a day off today. So I'm on a personal day. So I'm not getting paid to be here either. But, <laughs> but I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not doing all this on company time. This is all on my time too. All right. All right. Ready to get started. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Thank you. All in engineering, trying to do both. I think. Imagine. I was electrical engineering undergrad, and it's a tough, uh, <laughs> tough curriculum because of all the laboratories and things. Yeah. So, Nowadays, you, you would have been a millionaire by the time he was uh, done with college because they're paying these kids. <laughs> Did you start with Southern Railroad? Yes, sir. What year? Uh, 1970. 1970. June of 1970. Wow, it's pretty yeah. cool. I started in mechanical engineering and then uh, went to industrial engineering and then uh, finally ended up in research. And that's when I started studying derailments in 1970. Uh -huh. Or 1975, they started me on that. Well, what got you interested in that? Well, they called the me in one day and asked me if I wanted this kind of new position that studied. There was some uh, research going on at the AAR called Track Train Dynamics. Okay. And it was a way of getting back to the wheel rail interface, understanding the forces that go on in a moving wheel. Right. Because uh, the federal government was kind of taking research toward passenger, and yet we were having several thousand freight derailments a year back, back then because we were introducing the 100 ton cars and Nobody really knew the forces and things, so track train dynamics research was an effort to better understand the forces in the moving train, the curving forces, and uh, out of that also came a family of computer models that were being used to simulate in a computer what these forces would be at the coupler level and then at the wheel level. Uh huh. So. That's what they asked me to go in because nope. I had engineering background, I had computer knowledge. Now was this a private thing or was this was something that Southern Railroad introduced? Well, the track train dynamics was AAR, right. FRA, Transport Canada all funded it. That's what I wanted all to know. groups went in together. Cool. And it was headquartered both in Chicago and out at Colorado at that test place out there at Pueblo. So, uh, Neat. And I got to work with all the other railroads. And back then we had 25, maybe, Class 1 railroads. Uh huh. Now we're down to six. You yeah. Know? So you had 25. They're just a lot bigger. Well, you had 25 opinions in the room about everything. <laughs> so I hear that. <laughs> every time we try to come up with a, a standard or a procedure, you know, the Western railroads wanted uh -huh. one thing and the Eastern railroads yeah. wanted another. So wow, that's it neat. It was an interesting time to be alive, for sure. That's uh, very interesting to me to find that history out. Yeah. I love railroad history. And I, I just love that kind of stuff. Well, we, we were it was a very successful program, and uh, <coughs> learned a lot. And brought yeah. the derailments down from five 6,000 a year down to about 2,000 a year. Wow. Over about that eight, nine year period. So that's awesome. It was really... Uh, a good thing to be part of, you know, and to interact with the other railroads and right. learn their problems as opposed to the Southern Railway problems. Of course, we were the leader, Southern Railway. The best. Just, um, Southern was a great railroad in its day. Well, we actually did it was have very low derailment rate. We had the safety awards every year, the Harriman Awards, and uh, we took <laughs> derailments very seriously. And yeah. that was fortunate for me. Because management wanted to know the cause of every derailment. So That's great. That's why they were a great railroad. That's right. Yes, sir. Gives a green light to innovation. That's the soda. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah. All right. Let's see what. Okay, we got a little commercial break here, and then we'll get right back to the show. This is the book that Mr. Wolf wrote. Uh, the complete guide field guide to modern derailment investigation. 
This book has over 430 pages in each page about railroads, about cars and track, and uh, it's just chock full of information. Okay, uh, I highly recommend it. I think every railroader uh, should have this book. Um, and if you're a uh, if you if you're a fan of trains, then and you want to you want to know what the nitty gritty and how things work out here on the railroad, this is the book to have. I'll tell you what, I've had my copy for over three years. I can't say enough uh, good things about this book. It's uh, on sale right now on Mr. Wolf's website and uh, a very reasonable price. For over 430 pages, and each page in this book is just just uh, chock full of all kind of cool information. I mean, this is comprehensive. Ha-ha! <laughs> okay. <coughs> And uh, there is a link in this video's description to go see that uh, to uh, Mr. Wolf's uh, website, wolfrailrail.com, uh, where you can get this book. And this is that's the only place that I know of you can buy this book. Um, it's very reasonably priced for all the information. This is a this is a five or six hundred dollar manual, and he's got it on sale for seventy five bucks, and that's just phenomenal. All right, you're on. All right, we're here at a... Is that light messing with your eyes? No. We're here at a uh, SD40-2, I believe. Yes, locomotive sir. Locomotive truck. And uh, this is... I want to illustrate the difference. Later on, we'll show you freight car trucks. But I want to show the difference between freight car suspension and locomotive. It's, there's quite a bit of difference. First of all, the wheels and axles on every wheel set of a locomotive have what we call primary suspension uh, above the axle there's a spring if you can see in there a large mm -hmm. uh, two springs coil springs right and that isolates the axle from the truck frame right here so that's our first level of suspension to make a good smooth ride quality this is called the axle box here and it rides up and down between what we call the pedestal jaws. And we have some sacrificial liners here. These are uh, black hard plastic right here because wear occurs between the axle box and the edges of the pedestal because all the up and down motion mm -hmm. as you go around uh, switches yeah. and things. Now, and our track, our track is not all jointed tracks, so you get a lot of that on the joints you through get the up track. And down, side to sides. So yeah. you have vertical motion up and down. And you must maintain though a few sixteenths longitudinal clearance uh, between the axle box and the pedestal jaws so there is room for the axle assembly to move up and down freely. We don't want it to get stuck or jammed. No. So we gotta maintain that. Now, that brings the suspension to what we call the truck frame. This is a large, very, very large steel casting and if we go in here, I'll use my flashlight here. This large rubber sandwich spring is the secondary suspension. And you okay. can see that the car body or the locomotive body rests up here and on the truck frame between this rubber spring. And there's several of them on every truck. And that further isolates the locomotive body from the truck frame itself. That's called the secondary suspension back in here. We also have side bearings here. Uh, or the, yeah, right here. That's a side bearing plate. You must maintain a few sixteenths clearance there. Uh, <clears throat> and that allows the, the car body to roll slightly in curves and things. So, we don't have primary suspension on freight cars. Like down here at the axle level, and I'll illustrate that later. We only have secondary suspension on freight car trucks. So that results in the locomotive riding uh, much better for the crew. It's not as subjected to track inputs as a freight car would be. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right. All right. 